I attended a two-day Rubik's Cube competition with 13 events. How many PRs could I break if I participated in every single event? With this competition, I decided to set myself a goal to break at least 5 PRs at minimum and for a stretch goal, 10 PRs. The very first event was 3x3 round 1. My PR average in this event is 9.72 seconds and my PR single is 7.71 seconds. So I did some warm-up and submitted my cube to go up and compete. For the first off, the scramble looked alright and the start was decent. But I fumbled at the end. Doing the E-perm at the wrong orientation, giving me an additional H-perm I had to do to complete the solve, thus giving me a 11.78. Second self was much better. I got a pretty solid start, decent cases. 9.62 could be better, but not that in the world as it's a pretty good time still. Third self, I messed up really bad at F12. Got a dot wall case, and the whole self is ruined, so I decided to just do a cross hands timer stop and get a 14.50. So this average is now ruined, 11.7 days counting, which is absolutely not good. Fourth self is quite interesting, the start is pretty good, but I mess up the OL algorithm, but somehow still clutch it and get a 9.83. Sub 10 with the OL mess up is still pretty wild. For my last solve, I executed pretty fast, and I get a 10.02, which is decent. So the first round of 3x3 wasn't the best, but still a 10.54 average, which isn't the worst. And it's only the first round of 3x3. 150 people will be making the second round, and I've qualified. Next up comes 2x2. Two two. My PR average is 3.53 seconds and my PR single is 2.09 seconds. So after some warm up, I submit my cube to go up and compete. First solve wasn't really that good because my turning was absolutely abysmal. I got a 4.28. Second solve was a 3.50, which honestly isn't that bad. I'm not even sure why I look disappointed. Third solve wasn't the best as I happened to solve a layer, got a Y perm, and executed it really badly and got a 4.71. On the fourth self, I happened to solve a layer, but the oil was pretty bad, and I ended up with a PL skip, which saved itself a bit, and I got a 3.57, second best self with average so far. For the last self, I clutched up, got a 2.78, but I'm gonna have to be honest, I'm a bit not too happy because if I turned it better, I would have gotten a slightly better time. Granted, it wouldn't have PR, but I would have just, you know, obviously preferred a better result anyways. So I end up with a 3.78 average. Not that great, but with that said, there's more 2x2 two two to come, so that's all right. 100 people will make the second round, which I've qualified for. Next up comes Scoop. Scoop is an event I really didn't care for. I never regularly practiced the event. Fun fact, last time I competed in Scoop was 2015, and I haven't really practiced Scoop ever since. My PR average is 18.28 and PR single is 12.15. And these are old results. And I honestly don't even know what I average these days. So we'll have low expectations here as I go up and compete. So the first solve was quite interesting. I messed up very hard and threw, giving me a 27.18 second solve. Second solve was much better, I got an 18.26. Third solve, the scramble was really nice, and I ended up getting a 10.98. New PR single, first PR of the competition, so the PR counter goes up by one. Next solve, the scramble looked all right, at least to me, uh, not so good. Scoop solver, end up with a 14.60. Going to the last solve, I knew I had a lot of potential for PR average, so I needed to lock in. So the solve was pretty good and I got 13.44 locking in a PR average of 15.43 seconds. The PR counter goes up once again. This places me 87th and I advance to the next round of skew. After that was lunch, so I drove to get some scrumptious lunch before coming back to prepare to compete in the second round of 3x3. 
Maybe I could redeem myself and get a better average this round. Just as a quick reminder, my PR average is 9.72 and my PR single is 7.71. And in round one, I got a 10.54 average, which I'm really hoping to at least beat that 10.54 average. So after a bit of warm up, I submit my cube and go up and compete. First off, it is really atrocious. I fumble, get a V perm, and I also get a plus two, 11.79 plus two. Give me a 13.79. Not a good solve, not a good start. So my mental state is already kind of ruined and so I'm not looking good. Now to the second solve, cross is all right, but a bit of pause going to first up dual pair. Rest up dual is pretty smooth, nice oil, but PL turning is pretty bad, giving me 11.27. So now I'm counting 11 and I'm not happy. Third solve, the solve was decent, but F dual wasn't the best. And the horrible PL wall rotation and G perm led to a 10.96 second solve. For self, the start wasn't necessarily the best. But the last layer was decent, getting me a 10.26, fastest so far of the average. So going into the last self, here's what I'm thinking. This average is already ruined, but I don't want to make it even worse. So I have to do my best here. So going to the self, the F2 solution isn't necessarily the best. But the turning's decent. The main problem though is the E perm and I end up with a 10.23. So I get a 10.83 average. Even worse than first round, so not good. But at least it's good enough to make the semifinals where I can hopefully clutch up and do better. Next up came Megamix. For this event, I actually have a specific goal which I haven't talked about yet, which is to get an average which I've never done before. That would mean I would have to make the cutoffs of two minutes for this event, my PR single is 2 minutes 10.20, so I've never gotten an average, only have a single. So let's keep this short and simple. My first solve is a 2 minute 15.18, and my second solve is a 2 minute 11.62, meaning I don't make cutoffs or break any PRs here. So quick recap, this competition isn't going too well. So far, only two PRs in skew which ironically, I really don't care about. Next up came the 3x3 blindfolded first round. This event was very important to me because I had just recently learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube and really wanted to get a successful solve for the very first time. Here's the thing. The competition had a cumulative time limit of 10 minutes for all three attempts, and I knew I would most likely be able to only get one attempt. In. So I had to do my best to get a success. I've been grinding a lot of blind practice, and honestly, it's been a bit tough. Lots of successes, but also lots of struggles with getting solves under 10 minutes or dumb DNFs. So I wanted to compete. For your information, I used the old Pokemon method, which I learned from Charlie Eggins' blind tutorial. Shout out to Charlie Eggins, he taught me how to solve the Rubik's Cube blindfolded with his tutorial. So for those who don't know, the old Pokemon method is basically a beginner's method for blindfolded solving. So, I take my time to memorize the cube, and I find the scramble to be pretty nice. I want to success really badly, so I take extra time to make sure my memorization is correct. And I start executing. And execution goes pretty good. And I get a 706. 
blindfold itself, which is automatically a PR. It's a wild solve as there was no parity and no cycle breaks needed, which was absolutely insane luck, which is absolutely amazing. After I finished the attempt, I get asked whether I want to do another attempt, but knowing the rest of the time is clearly not enough for me to get another success, I opt out. So I'm one for one in blind solving so far, two DNSs and no DNFs. Next up is square one first round. I'm going to have to be honest, I'm pretty bad at square one and don't really practice. I don't have an average in competition and my PR single is 1 minute 18.15, which isn't that good. I'm just very inconsistent at this event, especially because I'm really bad at cube shape. So it's really the luck of draw with cube shape on how fast I am. I'm really hoping to get a lucky scramble and somehow make cutoffs. And quick summary, I don't make cutoffs, but both solves are still pretty nice. 1 minute 18.08 and 1 minute 12.78. So no parity on both solves, which is pretty wild. But yeah, enough to break the PR counter. We're only going to count the PR counter by one because in the same average, if I get two PRs, I'm only going to count one of them. After square one came clock first round where I just wanted a single solve. I learned how to solve clock recently and haven't done a single practice solve for this competition, kind of on purpose. I knew I wasn't making the cutoffs because it was 15 seconds, but the time limit was one minute and I knew I had a shot at making it. So I go up to compete and I fumble really bad. Don't even make time limit and just DNF. It was so bad where I was like, yeah, I'm not embarrassing myself again. I don't think it's worth my time doing a second clock attempt. So I'm not going to do it. So after clock comes the last event of day one, 5x5 five five round one. I'm pretty hyped for this event because I have the new game 5x5, five five, which is really nice. This is an event which I practiced a bit for, and I'm expecting some pretty nice results here. So my current PRs in competition are 1 minute 40.76 for average and 1 minute 24.47 for single. So I go up and compete. Do my first solve and it's pretty solid and I end up with a 134.54 which I'm pretty happy about, especially considering I haven't competed 5x5 five five in over 2 years. Next solve isn't the best, but being honest it's not the worst either. The main issue for me with 5x5 five five is pausing to find pieces, so that takes a while and I end up with 1 minute 40.28. Third solve is quite nice and things are looking good and I get a 1 minute 23.24, a new PR so the PR counter tick goes up again. Fourth solve is quite interesting because I forget what the method I'm using. So I normally use Yao and I accidentally do a Redux solve. However, it's not the end of the world because I get a 1 minute 34.14 which is decent. Being honest, my times are quite similar on both Redux and Yao, but I just think I have a higher potential cap with Yao and Yao is a bit more fun for me, which is why I use it. Now for my last solve, I make sure to remember to do Yao because I already forgot to do it the last solve. I want to do Yao this solve. Solve was decent and I ended up getting a 1 minute 34.66. So I end up with a PR average of 1 minute 34.45. PR by over 5 seconds. So the PR ticker goes up again. Pretty solid, but I'm sure I can improve in 5x5 five five again if I put in some more work. So with that, day 1 is done. It's a mixed bag day. So far I've gotten PRs in skew single, skew average, 3x3 three three blindfolded, 5x5 five five single. 5x5 five five average and square one single. But everything else honestly hasn't been that great, especially 3x3, three three, which I consider my main event as I practice at the most. But there's still semifinals on the next day for me to redeem myself. So now for the next day. First event of day two is Pyraminx round one. This is an event I really don't practice. My PR average is 10.10 and my PR single is 6.05. First off, is pretty move heavy. and I end up with a 10.70 which isn't the best. Second self starts off all right. Heather. 
for that fumble at the end caused me to get 11.48. Their scramble was honestly alright, but with my bad solutions and bad turning, I get a 13.35. Fourth solve was a pretty nice scramble and I get a 6.57, not a PR, but still a pretty nice solve. Now for the last solve of this average, I messed up on the solve with my solution and I get a 14.25 worst time. Giving me worst possible average of 11.84, which is not cool. After the pyramix was 2x2 two two second round, with this I wanted to redeem myself after my first 2x2 two two average. So came my first solve, pretty easy solution, but terrible turning and a bit of pausing making this solve a 3.76. Second solve comes and it starts decently but I can't execute a Y print for my life and I get a 6.32. Very horrible. I can't mess up anymore. If I mess up anymore, the average is entirely ruined. Now going to the third solve, scramble is quite nice, and I get a 2.95. 2.95 is a nice time, but considering the scramble, not so good. Fourth solve is a bad solve, so it's not a good time. And what's even worse is I got a plus 2. 5.45 plus 2, which is 7.45, as I didn't probably complete my last turn. Now this average is ruined with the counting 6. Now for the last solve, I gotta do good to at least you know somewhat salvage the average. This gamble was somewhat quite nice. I got a 2.58, so I count a 2 for the very first time ever in competition. But the average is bad due to the ruined solves. So no 2x2 two two PRs this comp as this is not enough to make the 2x2 two two finals. After 2x2 two two second round came the first round of 3x3 three three one handed. This event is something I've been really last minute practicing for because I really badly want a sub 20 single in competition. My PR average is 24.81 and my PR single is 20.43. Spoiler alert, that doesn't happen. I get a 24.26, 23.70, 24.19, 28.30, and 26.28, getting me a 24.91 average. Honestly, kind of sad because I was only 0.1 seconds from beating my PR average. And my last two solves could have easily been slightly better. After one headed comes a bunch of finals I didn't qualify for. There was 5x5, five five, Mega Mix, Clock, and 3x3 three three Blind for the finals. So around the end of these finals, I want to get myself some scrumptious lunch. So I get some time to eat a bit and do some 4x4 four four warm up. So I compete in 4x4. Four four. So 4x4 four is four, an event I've been practicing quite a bit, especially since... There's the Vin Cube 4, which is really awesome. My PR average is 49.24, my PR single is 45.19. First off was pretty bad. I had a bit of a lockup, which got a 59.19, which is absolute horrible. My second solve has a lot better flow, and I get a 45.59, much better. Third solve is also pretty nice, and turning is pretty flowy, and I get a 45.20, which I'm somewhat happy about. And that's because it's 0 0.01 away from my PR single, so if I was just 0 0.02 seconds faster, I would have broken my PR. Anyways, counting at 45.59 is pretty good for a competition average. So as long as I don't do bad, I have a good shot at getting PR average here. Next solve is pretty nice, 47.98. So now for the last solve, I just have to do good, or at least decent. And there's where things fall apart. I mess up so bad, I get a 1 minute 3.56. Man, a solve over a minute. Now the 59.19 is counting and ruining the average, giving me a 51.04, which is clearly not PR. If I had not fumbled, it would have easily been a PR average. After 4 before, came Pyramix second round. Pyramix went just as expected for me, as I don't practice. Ten point three nine, fourteen point seven nine, thirteen point five two, and seven point six seven, and a ten point two zero, giving me eleven point three seven average. Better than first round, but still no PR. But again, I don't really care too much about PR mix results, cause I don't practice the vet. Next up came Skib second round. Skib honestly was what I expected. 
and 15.64. Clearly not the best, but no complaints as I don't practice. And I already got skewed PRs in round one, so no skewed PRs again. With that came the 3x3 semifinals. My chance to redeem myself after all these garbage 3x3 averages in this competition so far. So the first off is pretty nice. And I get an 8.55. Second solve is feeling great as well. And I get an 8.97. So I have a counting 8 for the very first time ever. And this is looking really good. I can get a really good average here. Third self. I get a 9.37. So if I continue this, I can get a really good self. And if I'm really lucky, I can make finals. Which is actually going to be really tough because there's a lot of top cubers at this competition, such as Maddie Herrera Naba and Max Seal. Fun fact, Maddie did get two threes at this competition, which was absolutely insane. But that's kind of a side note. So now going to the fourth self. Remember, I'm trying to get a good self here, and I ended up getting a 10.21. And my final solve is 11.45. So worst possible average on the last solve, but still a nice average as it's a 9.50 average, which is PR. Not enough to make finals. 16th place, which was the last place to qualify for finals, had an 8.82 average in the semifinals. So, realistically, finals probably wasn't going to happen anyways. So with that said, I was done with 3x3 for the day, and time to focus on my last events for the day, 6x6 and 7x7. 6x6 and 7x7 were really wild because there was a crazy combined cumulative time limit of 15 minutes. So with that, I chose to do 6x6 first to see whether I would have time to get a 7x7 single afterwards. So my 6x6 PR average is 3 minutes 28.82 and my PR single is 3 minutes 17.65. First off, things look pretty decent. I got a 3 minute 10.99, immediately a PR single which is nice. Next two solves are a 3 minute 40.40 and a 3 minute 39.23. With that, I get a PR average of 3 minute 26.67. So after this, I decided to gamble and do a 7x7 attempt hoping for a really, really easy scramble, because if it's really, really easy, I might get lucky and get a solvent. But it doesn't happen. I got a 5 minute 39.82, which gets DNF, because it brings me outside the cumulative time limit. So with that said, I'm done with all my competing for the competition. To summarize, I've participated in all 13 events, and how many PRs did I end up breaking? Well, let's count. I ended up breaking skew PR single, skew PR average, three blind single, square one single, five by five single, five by five average, three by three average, six by six single, and six by six average. So nine PRs. Just one PR away from my stretch goal, which was honestly totally possible. There were many ways I could have possibly done it if I just been slightly faster on that 4x4 solve or actually practice clock. You know, there are other ways of getting it, but overall, a pretty successful competition. With that said, what can we learn? Well, first, sometimes low expectations can yield good results, as that's what happened in skew round one and I ended up destroying my PRs. Second, when setting goals, make sure they're realistic. There's no point in setting unrealistic goals, which I think my goals were pretty reasonable here. 
Last lesson is the whole point of a competition is to have fun, and I definitely had a lot of fun here. So with that said, overall, I really enjoyed this competition. Huge shout out to West Coast Cubing, the organizers, and all the staff for running this competition. Also, a huge shout out to The Cubicle, the sponsor of this channel and this video. They sell a lot of cool puzzles, and you should definitely check them out. You can find all the puzzles I used in this competition at The Cubicle. Just remember to use discount code CUBE, C -E -W -B, at checkout for 5% off all orders. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.